Yellowstone National Park is one of America's greatest natural treasures and one of the world's most popular vacation destinations. Its old faithful geyser erupting every 90 minutes or so is an iconic part of the American West. But that same supervolcano could end all life on Earth. What exactly is going on beneath Yellowstone's surface and how likely are we to see its super eruption in 2025? Let's take a look at what scientists have discovered about the volcano's hidden depths. This is Yellowstone's supervolcano, the end of the world. Yellowstone sits atop a supervolcano caldera, which has had three major eruptions in the past two million years. The last two were about 800,000 and 640,000 years ago, but the third was 20 million years ago. All three eruptions sent 2,500 cubic miles of ash and rock into the air, covering much of North America in a layer of pumice up to 300 feet thick. But these massive explosions weren't continuous. Instead, they were the result of many smaller eruptions over thousands or even millions of years. These events built up layers of solid rock inside the caldera that eventually formed the Yellowstone we know today. But if the park is still active, why isn't it covered in ash? That's because the magma chamber underneath has gone through several periods of quiet. Some scientists estimate there have been as many as seven super eruptions in the past 15 million years. If this pattern continues, we may be due for another explosion soon. So when will it happen? Maybe in 2025. Scientists have no idea when the next super eruption will occur, but recent activity has them keeping a close eye on things. In 2014, researchers discovered a magma reservoir three miles below the park's northeast corner. They found that between 2004 and 2013, the magma chamber had filled with molten rock at an average rate of 7.2 cubic miles per year. That's enough magma to fill the Grand Canyon in just four minutes. Now that might not sound like cause for alarm, but it does mean that more magma is on its way to the surface. To make matters worse, in 2018, scientists discovered a second magma chamber. It's located under the Norris Geyser Basin, one of the park's most popular attractions, and it may play a role in future eruptions. See, the Norris Geyser Basin is one of the hottest spots in Yellowstone. Its steamboat geyser erupts almost daily, reaching heights of up to 300 feet. But these geysers are just the tip of the iceberg, literally. Just below the surface, there's a lake of boiling hot water over 200 feet deep. And below that lies a magma chamber nearly five miles below the ground. In 2023, researchers used seismic tomography to peer deep into the earth and see what was happening inside the magma chamber. They found that it contained pockets of cooler magma interspersed with hotter pockets. And while it's normal for magma chambers to have different temperatures, what they found was unusually cool. Magma chambers usually have temperatures of around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but the one at Norris was only 1,600 degrees. Why is that important? Well, the magma's low temperature could mean it's old. It may have been hanging around in the chamber for a long time without erupting. In fact, the magma may have been cooling there for hundreds of thousands of years. And that spells trouble. You see, when magma cools, it becomes more dense. And when it's dense enough, it can sink through the mantle and trigger a volcanic eruption. So the magma chamber at Norris may be filling up with magma once again, and it could erupt at any time. The good news is that even if it did erupt, it wouldn't be anything like the Big Three. For one thing, it wouldn't be nearly as big. The Norris eruption would only cover a small part of Montana and Wyoming in ash. The bad news is that even a small eruption from a magma chamber that deep could release huge amounts of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, and those gases could have global effects. Carbon dioxide, for example, traps heat in the Earth's lower atmosphere. If large amounts of it were released, it could cause the planet's average temperature to rise by as much as three degrees. That might not sound like much, but even a small increase could have major consequences. According to some estimates, a three-degree increase could lead to rising sea levels, more extreme weather events, and mass extinctions. Even worse, the sulfur dioxide released during the eruption could form sulfuric acid in the atmosphere. That acid could then react with water vapor and other chemicals to form aerosols. Aerosols are tiny solid particles suspended in gas. They can reflect sunlight away from the earth, leading to global cooling. 
In fact, some scientists believe that aerosols from volcanic eruptions in the 1800s may have caused the global temperature to drop by as much as one degree. A similar cooling effect could occur if the magma chamber at Norris were to erupt. So while a small eruption from the Norris magma chamber may not destroy the world, it could have serious consequences for life on Earth. But that's not the only thing scientists are worried about. There's also the possibility of a much larger eruption. Some experts believe that the Yellowstone supervolcano could blow again. It might not be as big as the previous eruptions, but it could still be pretty nasty. We're talking about an explosion that could send 1,000 cubic miles of ash and rock into the atmosphere and cover much of the western United States in a layer of pumice. But don't worry, we're probably safe. Right now, there are no signs that a super eruption is imminent. In fact, the chances of it happening anytime soon are extremely low. According to the United States Geological Survey, the probability of a major eruption in any given year is less than one in one million. So we have nothing to worry about, right? Well, maybe not. You see, scientists have been studying Yellowstone for decades, but they've only been able to do so much. Much of what we know about the volcano comes from indirect evidence, like the chemical composition of rocks and minerals in the area. But we're still missing a lot of information. We don't know, for example, how much magma is in the reservoir beneath the park or how deep it goes. And until we learn more about these things, we won't really know how dangerous Yellowstone is. Some researchers are working on ways to get more data about the volcano. One promising technique is called radar sounding. Radar sounding uses radio waves to measure the depth of underground structures. By sending radio waves into the ground and measuring how long it takes for them to come back, scientists can create detailed maps of the subsurface. Another technique known as magnetotellurics uses magnetic fields to image the interior of the Earth. By measuring changes in magnetic fields, scientists can identify areas where the electrical conductivity of the rocks changes. Changes in conductivity often indicate the presence of magma. These techniques are still in development, but they could help us learn more about the Yellowstone supervolcano and better understand the risks it poses. While we wait for more data, though, we should keep an eye on the volcano, just to be safe. Experts have estimated that a major eruption would be preceded by swarms of earthquakes. So if we see an increase in earthquake activity in the area, it could be a sign that an eruption is coming. Luckily, we have the technology to monitor Yellowstone very closely. The United States Geological Survey maintains a network of seismometers around the park that can detect even the smallest tremors. If an earthquake swarm does occur, we'll be able to respond quickly. But even if we do detect signs of an impending eruption, there's not much we can do to stop it. We can't move the magma chamber or cool the magma down. Our best bet would be to evacuate the surrounding area and hope for the best. If a major eruption does occur, it will be a devastating event. Ash and debris will rain down over the western United States, killing or injuring thousands. The economy will suffer as transportation and agriculture are disrupted, but it will also be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. People will travel from all over the world to see the massive plume of ash and debris rising above the horizon. They'll collect samples of pumice and obsidian and tell stories of the day the world ended. And who knows? Maybe we'll learn some valuable lessons about our planet and ourselves along the way. When will the world end? Maybe in 2025. Only time will tell. Hey, thanks for watching.